Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm Dustin Roberts, and today Rabbi Schneider helps us understand the depths of God's name. Have you ever wondered why God has so many names in the Bible? There are a ton. So today, Rabbi is going to take us on a fascinating journey. It's going to take us through some of the Hebrew names of God. And his names, they're not just fancy titles. They're windows into God's character and his nature. And these names are important to know because God wants us to know him more intimately. So go ahead. Grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea, and let's get started. Here's Rabbi to explain God's covenant name, Yahweh. I am excited to continue our study on the Hebrew names and titles of God with you today. But before I get right into that, I want to make one final comment on the last Hebrew title of God that I left off on. I was talking about knowing God as El Shaddai. Most Christians know the name El Shaddai. It means God Almighty. And this name was revealed by the Creator to Abraham when Abraham didn't know how the promise that the Lord made to him, that he was going to be the father of many nations, and that his descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky. And here was Avram, Abraham, Past the age of childbearing, he had not yet had a son through his own wife, Sarai, who became Sarah, and he's wondering, how in the world is this promise ever going to be fulfilled? And it's in this context that the Lord reveals himself to Moses as, I am El Shaddai, I am God Almighty, is anything impossible for me? I wanted to make a comment that I didn't get a chance to make as I ended that teaching, and it's simply this, that the word Shaddai comes from the Hebrew word Shad. And the word Shad, the Hebrew word Shad means breast, particularly a mother's breast. And so when the Lord revealed himself as El Shaddai, God Almighty, contained in that revelation is the concept that he will supply our needs and nourish us and give us what we need even as a mother nourishes her baby, her infant, by her breast. And I love to think about the tenderness that God has for you and me. Just think about this. El Shaddai, coming from, again, the concept of a mother's breast. God is so tender towards you and I. And I just want us to remember that I'm going to bring up this concept as we progress through this series. So for now, let's go straight forward. And we're going to go now to God's covenant name, Yahweh. Now, this name, this personal covenant name of God, Yahweh, appears almost 7,000 times in the Hebrew Scriptures. I want you to think about this. Yahweh appears 7,000 times In the Old Testament, we call the Tanakh in Hebrew. Most of you know that now. And yet you'll never hear Jewish people today refer to God as Yahweh. Instead, they'll refer to him as Lord, the Hebrew word being Adonai. So in place of Yahweh, traditional Jews will call him Adonai, Lord, because traditional Jewish people feel that his name is so sacred that we shouldn't say it. But the point that I strive to make is, if we shouldn't refer to our Father by the name He gave us to refer to Him as, and if we shouldn't refer to Him as Yahweh, then why is it used 7,000 times in the Hebrew Bible and everybody from Moses onward in the Old Testament refer to our maker that entered into a covenant with us as Yahweh. Now, the name Yahweh comes from four Hebrew consonants, Yud, He, Vav, He. Yud, He, Vav, He. It's sometimes called the Tetragrammaton. And in Hebrew, 
We don't have vowels. We just have the consonants. So God's sacred covenant name that he gave to Moses, Yahweh, is composed of these four Hebrew consonants. But how do we know how to connect the Yud to the He, to the Vav to the He? How do we know what that sounds like? So for example, if you have, let's say, two consonants together, let's say a B and a T, but you didn't have a vowel between them. How would you know if it was the B and the T were strung together to form the sound bit, but, bat? How would you know? You need the vowels to know how it's pronounced. And so in Hebrew, because there's no vowels connecting the consonants together, because again, there are no vowels in the Hebrew language, what the scribes did is they put accent markings below the Hebrew letters and the accent markings serve as helping us to know which vowel sound we should include with the pronunciation of the consonant. And so these accent markings were added by the scribes to help people know how to read the Hebrew. But listen what happened. The scribes put the accent markings in the wrong places over yud heh vav heh God's covenant name, because they didn't want the pagans to know how God's covenant sacred name should be pronounced. And so they disguised it. And then what happened is the yuh sound in Hebrew got changed to a J sound as it became translated into English. So you have two things going on. You've got the accent markings over the wrong place of the consonants in the Hebrew name of God. And then the yuh sound became a J sound over time, which is just the development of language. So when I say the yuh sound became a J sound, here's an example. If you go to Israel or have been into Israel, when you enter Jerusalem, there's a big sign on the side of the road that you're entering Jerusalem. And there'll be English, you'll see it in English letters, and then you'll see it in Hebrew. So when you read the English, it says Jerusalem, J-E-R, right? Jerusalem. But when you read the Hebrew, it doesn't say Ja, it says Ya, Yerushalayim. And so in modern times, think about this. Have you ever heard of the song, there's no one like Jehovah? There's no one like Jehovah? There is no one like Jehovah. You know why there's no one like Jehovah? Because there's no God named Jehovah. That is just uh, uh, the Christian understanding of how to pronounce God's name because of the fact that the ancient sages disguised how to pronounce his name by putting the accent markings over the wrong places in the consonants and because the Hebrew began to be pronounced in English from a ya to a J. So rather than being pronounced Yahweh, the church says Jehovah, but there is no God named Jehovah. Remember that song, Jehovah Jireh? Same thing. There is no Jehovah Jireh. It's Yahweh, and Jireh is not pronounced Jireh. It's pronounced Yireh. And so this is all interesting, but let's get back now to our foundation We're going to look into the Word of God to discover where the Lord first revealed His sacred covenant name, Yahweh, to His people. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back. But first, did you know that you can receive real-time encouragement straight from Rabbi through text message? Visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com and click on the link that says, Rabbi, text me. Or you can text the keyword rabbi to the number 88777. Rabbi sends these special text messages as the Holy Spirit leads, and he looks forward to connecting with you real soon. Thank you for remembering that Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a listener-supported ministry. Rabbi Schneider's teachings are made possible through the generous gifts from people like you, who understand the importance of sharing the good news of Jesus' return. Because of you, we are changing lives all over the world. Give online by visiting discoveringthejewishjesus.com or call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. 
And now let's get back to Rabbi's message. So we go, first of all, to Exodus chapter 3, and Moses meets God. He meets his creator. He meets the God that loved Israel at the burning bush. Let's pick up there now in verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, and here we go, yud heh vav heh, Yahweh, the Lord's revealing his name, the Lord, if you look in your Bible, it's going to say the Lord. But every time you see in the Old Testament, the word Lord in all caps, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, what is actually in the Hebrew is not the word Lord, it's yud heh vav heh, Yahweh. The translators actually did a great disservice by translating Yahweh as Lord, because when you think of Lord, it's somewhat impersonal. But Yahweh is actually a personal name. And so you refer to the Lord and you have reverence, you have awe and love, but that's not God's name. So great disservice, in my view, when the translators took God's name and translated it Lord, but that's what you see almost 7,000 times in your Old Testament. So let's continue on. And then the Lord says, picking up, God furthermore said to Moses, you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, there's Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial name for all generations. And so this is God's, get this church, this is our Lord's covenant name. It's his personal name. And it's his name forever and ever and ever. And in fact, we're going to be studying further in this series how Yahweh connected his name to the different things he does and did for his people. We're going to be looking at Yahweh Yireh, Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Sid Kanu, Yahweh Makadesh, Yahweh Rofecha, or Yahweh Rapha. And how the Lord revealed himself as Yahweh and then connected his name to what he does for his people. And what this helps us to understand is that the one that we're in relationship with is a person, and the name that was used when God made the covenant with Israel was in the name Yahweh. So God's covenant name is Yahweh. And then what the Lord did throughout the Torah is he met Israel's needs in conjunction with his name Yahweh. And depending on what the need was that he met, he connected his name Yahweh to what he does for us, what he did for Israel and what he does, beloved ones, for you and I today because you have been grafted in, according to the word of God, to the common wealth of Israel. So what Yahweh did for Israel, he now does for all those that are in covenant relationship with him, Jew and Gentile, man and woman alike, that are in relationship with him, that are in relationship with the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is Yahweh, all that Yahweh did for Israel, being their provider, being their healer, being their victory, being their sanctification. We're going to go into all this as we further down the trail in the study of his name. He does the same thing for those of us that are in covenant with him today. But before we move on, I want to just spend a little bit more time here in Shemot, we say in Hebrew, Exodus chapter 3. God said to Moses, I am who I am. From the earliest time that I began to read the word of God after the Lord revealed himself to me in 1978, when I really began to study the scriptures, I was so fascinated and had such joy whenever I thought about how God revealed himself as I am who I am. Because to me, no one thinks of that and makes it up. Only God could have thought of that and said that because that is who he is. He is the ground of all being. I am. He's always been. He always is. 
and he always will be. And we see this repeated often in Scripture. I am he who was, who is, and who is to come. So when the Lord revealed himself to Moses, he says, I am who I am, and my name is Yahweh. It brings me joy. And another thing that I think is fantastic to think about and meditate on as we're kind of driving understanding from who God wants to be to us through this presentation of himself to us as I am who I am, is that wherever you are, God is here, he is near, he's with you. Listen, he's in the present. I am who I am is the God who is present. I am who I am. He's always present. He is going to be in your future, even as he was with you in your past, if you didn't know it. And another thing I love about this, think about this. I am who I am. He is continuous, unfinished action, meaning God's alive. He is always in motion. He's always moving. He's alive. It's just like a physical person that's alive. Their heart is always beating. God's heart in the spirit is always beating. He's always alive. And that just kind of wakes you up and helps you to know that you're alive. When you know God's alive, it helps you know you're alive. And so people, you know, try to argue there's no God. I could say so many things, as many of you could, to refute that stupidity and that rebellion to claim there's no God. There's so many great logical statements and truths that could be brought forth to say, you know, that's total foolishness. You know, the man that says there is no God, the scripture says, is a fool. But one of the things, again, before we move on, that I love is when God said to Moses, I am who I am. To me, no one could have thought about that. No one could have thought of even saying that, but God himself. And so this is just an introduction to God's personal sacred covenant name. We're going to continue on the next episode in this series. We're going to be looking at Exodus 6, where the Lord continued to expound on his name. But I want to just encourage you to appreciate this revelation of knowing God through the Hebrew roots of your faith. This is something that the Lord with joy is reaching out to you today with. It's like come out of paganism, right? Because a lot of the things in the church have pagan roots. But what God is doing is he's bringing us back to our Jewish roots. And that's why Jesus said to the woman at the well in John 4, woman, you don't know what you worship. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So next time you're maybe in a church service and they're singing that song, Jehovah Jireh, you can celebrate it. You can have a good time. You can enjoy it. But remember, it's not Jehovah Jireh. It's Yahweh Yireh. We're going to get into that specific name, covenant name, Yahweh Yireh. And I think as you study this deeper with me, as you go down this trail of truth to discover who our Creator wants to be to us by discovering His Hebrew names and titles, it's going to strengthen you, my beloved brother and sister. It's going to root you and ground you in truth. And as a result of that, you're going to get stronger. You're going to rise up in faith. And you're going to break off the shackles of darkness and the enemy from your life. I haven't heard a sermon on the widow's might lately. Have you? Maybe some of you have. Perhaps you don't even know the story. Yeshua, Jesus, was at the temple one day observing people as they were coming to put their offering forward unto the Lord. And a widow came and she just gave just a little bit. But Yeshua, Jesus commented to his disciples that her offering was actually the greatest of any he had observed, even though it was a small amount, because he said she gave out of her poverty when the others gave out of their abundance. They had so much money, it didn't cost them anything to make an offering. It didn't hurt. But that widow gave out of a position where it was just pure love, pure adoration for the Lord, pure obedience. It was a sacrifice. It reminds me of David that said, I will not offer to the Lord that which cost me nothing. I want to encourage us all. Let's be faithful to the Lord with our finances. It should hurt a little bit. And God promised it's going to come back good measure running over 
into our laps. I encourage you to give unto the Lord through this ministry if it's feeding you. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. And friend, if God is calling you to support this ministry with the gift of any amount, would you go online right now and donate? You'll find us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com, or you can give a gift of any amount by calling us at 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. And you can also send a financial donation of any amount in the mail to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. And you know, we love learning about all the people around the world that are exploring the depths of Scripture with us each and every day. And we understand that we could never have that kind of reach without you. And it's because of your support from our faithful friends that believe in the mission and give generously that we can be heard not only on this local station, but also on stations all around the world. So make sure to please reach out today. As a token of our appreciation for your faithful generosity, we want to send you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month. It's available as a digital download. And then for anyone who becomes a new monthly partner, we'll send you an additional gift, an authentic handcrafted shofar that's made right in Israel. And this is a beautiful instrument. And it's also one that you can display at your home this fall as we prepare to celebrate the fall holy days. They're coming up in a couple of weeks. The fall feasts begin at sunset on October the 2nd with the Feast of Trumpets, and the fall feast will conclude on October the 23rd at nightfall at the end of Tabernacles. So please become a monthly partner right now, and we'll send you this wonderful shofar. You can give by visiting us online or by texting your donation to us. Just type the keyword rabbi to the number 45777 to give by text message. That's the keyword rabbi to the phone number 45777. And now we want to wrap up this program with a special blessing from Rabbi Schneider. I pray that you've been blessed and encouraged today, and I pray that the Lord touches you in a very special way during this amazing fall holy day season. God bless. The words from the Aaronic Blessing in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27, helps us to realize how good God is to you and I personally. So receive His blessing into your life, and then, beloved one, go bless somebody else in Jesus' name today. Yavah Yahweh Yair Yahweh Panavelecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panavelecha Veasim Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance. And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. Let our prayer team pray for you. We lift up every individual request before the Lord. And then, as God answers your prayer request, or if God has touched your life through discovering the Jewish Jesus, send us your testimony. We want to rejoice with you, and your testimony will encourage others. Submit your prayer request or testimony at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also connect with us on your social media outlets to stay up to date on the content you love. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. Connecting with Discovering the Jewish Jesus has never been easier. Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries, and I'm your host, Dustin Roberts. Come back next week when Rabbi Schneider continues this study called To Know Him by Name. That's Monday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.